This is Boston Chris with another great episode of the ETX Rock Show. Louise here. The Descript. Featuring all genres and styles of entertainment. And what we do call the ETX Rock. Let's hear from Louise, please. From the unheralded and unheard to the legends and beyond. Out of the box. <laughs> ETX Rock. It's awesome. We keep them coming. Five dollars. That's pocket check. Well, hey, y'all. This is Haley McDaniel. Are y'all ready for this? ETX Rock Show is the greatest show of all time. Okay. We are ETX Rocks. The ETX Rock Show is the best show of all time, say? The other shows, you're good, you're real good. As long as we're around, you'll be second best, say? Cut! Hey y'all, this is Bree Bagwell. Thank you for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show. Hey guys, Boston Chris here with another great episode of Behind the Music with Boston Chris, only here on the ETX Rock Show. That's right, we finally have a name for my segment every Saturday here on the show. Uh, before we get to our amazing guest today, though, I, I need to talk a little bit about some stuff that's happened here in East Texas. Our hearts are heavy this afternoon. Um, as many of you know, this this will be out later, but last night, um, Canton was pretty much destroyed um, by a series of tornadoes. And all of our hearts are with everybody affected by those storms over there in Canton. Um, we're thinking about you guys, we're praying about you guys, and I'm sure the community, as always, will come together to make sure that our very own are taken care of. And I just wanted to make sure that um, that message was conveyed to you folks out there, and I'm dedicating this episode to anybody affected by the storms. And that brings us to our very special guest here it's this week. He's a now a two-time guest on the ETX Rock Show. You got Mr. John Horde in the house once again. Thank you, man, for coming back on the ETX Rock Show. Man, I appreciate it. I thank y'all so much for getting us back, uh, getting me back up here. Um, it's a, uh, it's always a great thing when somebody asks for you to come back. You know? Right. So. And John was uh, episode sixty. So if you guys want to kind of go back to that after watching this one and, and check out the first interview we did with with John, that was a very emotional and and fun one. And, and a fun interview as yeah. well. But we really uh, we tackled a lot of John's background and his struggles with his dad's addiction and growing up with that. And you guys can definitely check that out on episode sixty. But today we want to talk about all of the amazing new stuff that John has going on. And uh, before we get started, I want to read a little bit about John from his from his webpage. John Horde has been taking the Texas country music scene by a storm. Growing up, he found influences influences in almost everything he listened to, from George Strait and Garth Brooks to his very own father, Houston singer Jeff Horde. He spent his younger years singing around campfires and in a church band decided to pursue music professionally in early 2016. So he's only been around about a year. He's a youngin in this business. Um, first single was Blame It On The Whiskey, which was kind of an, uh, an ode to your dad. And that ended up number 33 on the charts. I know that that single was still kind of steaming up the charts when we talked to you last. It got all the way to 33, man. So first I want to say congrats on that. Appreciate an it. awesome job. For, for it to go that high on a debut single, I mean, it's just... It's, it's amazing, astonishing to me. Yeah, and I agree 100% with that. I mean, whenever you're new to something, you know, something, whatever you're trying to sell has to be amazing. And, uh, I mean, that song you played for us on the first episode, episode 60, uh, it's just an incredible song. And, of course, now you're promoting the, the follow-up single to that, which is called More Than I'm Used To. And, again, another phenomenal song. And I think you're going to actually play that for us, right? Yes, sir, I am. So tell us a little bit about the background behind the song and, and how it came to be well um so basically uh well it's kind of cliche the song is you right. know a lot of the bar scene the country music scene you know you go out and uh, everybody's trying to pick them up you know pick somebody up mm -hmm. to go home with you know so uh you kind of get used to that <laughs> lifestyle and, and uh I, I didn't personally live that lifestyle i actually sure uh, no nah, <laughs> You know, I found my wife at an early age, and uh, we've been together for quite a long time, since 2005. Wow, congrats. So, yeah, um, and been married since 2009. So, uh, I didn't ever get to experience it, but all my buddies did. They would always get in trouble out there at the bars, you know. And so, uh, I was like, man, one, one day you guys are going to have to give all that up and actually find somebody that you can, you know, grow up together with and, and uh, you know, and uh, start a family. And, right. And so I kind of wrote that with that mindset, like, man, they, how is that going to happen? How is that going to translate, you know, in their life? And, and uh, they're just going to have to 
either one day just decide that that's when I would get lucky and and uh, and just find somebody by chance. Right. But uh, this is song is kind of about a a guy like I described, and then finding a woman that and they're just absolutely just fall in love with it so much more than what they were used to right. doing on a routine basis. And I mean it's a it's a very relevant song to a lot of people for sure. And I think uh, you know in country music especially it's really important to be relevant. Um, and I mean, a lot of people can feel a song like that, you know, it's kind of like, hey, grow up a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so guys, this is uh, More Than I'm Used To by John Horde, and this is already a top 100 single in Texas. I think it's already top 80, isn't it? Uh, yes, sir. It's in the 60s, now, yeah. I think. I mean, it's moving up very, very rapidly. And uh, if you guys like this song, make sure you're requesting it to all of your local country radio stations, no matter where you live, even if you're in Thailand. All right, so this one's uh, More Than I'm Used To. Um, request it as much as you can out there. It's, uh, it's moving up the charts. It's in the 60s right now, and hopefully by the time that you watch this, it'll be number one. Here it goes. Never been a one woman man. Never been much on the road in their hands. Say
important, so grab a pen. We are mobile audio and video productions serving East Texas and surrounding areas. We're running a special for electronic press kits, also known as promos or EPKs. For $496 with everything included, we will come to your location, film and record your band's live performance, interview band members, then create a professional package with graphics and effects delivered to you in the digital format of your choice, ready to be uploaded to your band's website, Facebook page, or YouTube channel. The packages we prepare can also be pretty valuable tools to send to venues, booking agents, or promoters, even record labels. You take your band seriously, make sure the world does too. Here's our number, 903-738-3881. Check out mobileaudiolabs.com. Find us on Facebook, Mobile Audio and Video Productions. All right, we are back with another awesome episode of the ETX Rock Show. And once again, we are here with Mr. John Hoard, um, brand new country singer here on the Texas Red Dirt and country music scene. Um, and, you know, slamming up the charts with his debut single last year and his follow up this year already in the top 60s. Um, and again, I mean, you guys who have uh, tuned in before, anytime you're really listed on the charts, um, that's a huge accomplishment because at any given time, there's hundreds and hundreds of artists with singles out in Texas. So um, I would love to hear from your perspective as a, a fairly new artist on the scene. What's it like every Friday when you see this chart come out and you see your name, John Hoard, it's on there. It's with guys like Aaron and Cody and um, Stoney and all these huge names. It's absolutely mind blowing knowing how much music is out there that doesn't get heard. Right. And your name's on that list. And, uh, you know, you, you always want your song to do well, you know, but I mean, there's just so much competition out there, you know, um, but sometimes you're scared to look at the charts. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> and sometimes you're excited about it, you know, right. it's, it's like opening a gift from your grandma. You don't know if you're going to get clothes or a toy when you're kids, right. you know, so. <laughs> I can imagine, I mean, cause, uh, you know, I've got a close friend of ours and host on the show, Haley McDaniel, you know, she, she's got a, a single that's charted really well. Um, at any time it would, you know, if it, if it would drop two or three spots, she would get really, you know, frustrated with that. So I can clearly see what you're saying about that Friday chart coming out. Because I imagine if you drop even one spot, you feel like your momentum has been cut short. Right. And, and sometimes that's not, you know, necessarily true. Sometimes yeah. it's just somebody did really well and exactly. got a lot of ads and it, it moved you down, but you're still... You're still performing. Right? Yeah, and if you're still gaining spins and ads yeah. and all that, I think that's what matters anyway. Absolutely. Because uh, as long as you're gaining and there's plus signs next to those numbers, then I think you're pretty golden. And then, you know, as, as an, for an artist, um, kind of closing that perspective is that uh, you can't just look at the charts and how you're performing on the charts and use that as a measurement for your success. Right. Because, I mean, uh, a lot of places that you go out there and get your music heard, they don't report <laughs> Spendies, right you know exactly and uh i mean just like you guys i mean you guys are awesome for artists to get distribute your music out right and let everybody know you know about them and what's going on and, and uh that to me is just equally as important as where your position is on the chart um i think you just got to get your music out there and get it heard i think it's also probably pretty important to you guys you know when you're doing a live show and the feedback you're getting from fans you know, right there in your face with oh, a live yeah. performance. That's all that matters is the fans and, you know, just um, getting their feedback, their response, you know, that they're, uh, they're the only ones that keep this business going, Right. <laughs> you know. But, you know, and again, as we mentioned in the first time we talked to you, you know, um, music is kind of in your, in your blood anyway. It's a family <laughs> tradition. Uh, thank yeah. you, Hank. Uh, but, uh, I mean, really, with you, it is. Um, so it's not like you came out of nowhere, either. You know, you had the, that background kind of instilled in you um, to be musically inclined and follow your dreams. And, I, you know, like we mentioned on episode 60, you know, you also know the drawbacks and what to avoid. Um, so I think you've got really the both sides of the coin pretty well documented, if you know what I mean. Like, you know what not to do, but you also know what to do. So... Um, that's a huge advantage to you, I think. I think it's definitely helped, you know. Um, it's funny you say family tradition. That was actually the very first song I ever learned to sing as a kid. Wow. I, I, I'd say uh, instead of family tradition, I would sing family addiction. Wow. <laughs> yeah. 
We talked a lot about that uh, yeah. last year, so you guys do need to check that out. That was a really good, um, fun time that we had out there in Hallsville with you. And, oh, man. Um, you know, really got to know John Hort a whole lot better, and uh, the, the episode's really well received. A lot of people have watched it and um, have enjoyed it. But again, you know, back then we were just doing audio. So now that we're, we've got the movie set and all that, I was like, man, what do we want back? And, and you were the first <laughs> one that came to mind. So John Hort is back, and, and we're excited. And I'm going to tell you guys the main reason why we wanted him back, and that's right here in my hand. This is the new, brand new EP just released in March. It's called The Home You Made For Me. And it is the first recorded stuff that John Hort has ever put out. So I know when, whenever he sees that, you see pride in his eyes. Um, because every song on here except for one was written by him. And the, and the last one was written by his dad. Um, and there's six songs on here. Um, so what I want to know from you, we really didn't talk about this too much last year, is your songwriting process. Because um, you are a very, very good songwriter, obviously. You know, your, your songs are very well received on Texas radio. So I would love to hear from your perspective what it's like for you writing a song. What's that process like? Yeah, so I mean, um, sometimes I just get a really good hook, and uh, that's that's one way. Sometimes it's just I have a really good uh, you know melody in my head. Right. Like, man, what it's like more than I'm used to. It's the hook of the song, really. Right. That's it. Yeah, and it ended up being the title as well. Build around that, and um, that's that's generally how it you know, most of the time. So, I mean, as you're walking through life, I've asked a lot of songwriters this question. I mean, you're walking through life, just living a normal day. I mean, a lot of times you can overhear a hook. You know, like somebody else says something and it just clicks in your mind like, man, that would be cool in a song. Yeah. Does that happen to you? Absolutely. And then uh, that happens and then uh, if you're just saying something or talking and you come up with a phrase that's in a song and then you just start singing it. You know, right. it's, it's a It's a curse <laughs> well i wrote a really good hook in a song that nobody's ever heard and the hook was um i wanted bass but your trouble i wanted good but your trouble okay hey yeah. see that's not bad right no that's not bad <laughs> i did that but no um that uh, my nephew is in a band was in a band and, and they were writing a song called um what the heck was the name of the song again here i go again it was, the song was called here i go again and it was basically about addiction okay. and, and always falling back into that. And, and you think, like, I wanted bass, but you're trouble. They're talking about a girl, but no, they're not. But mm. in the song, it was talking about addiction. I think they might have been playing around with that song when uh, I did my last EP with you guys. Yeah, they might have been, actually. Yeah, they might have been. But yeah, I mean, I had a good songwriter friend of mine say, hey, man, who wrote that bass and treble and good and trouble line? That was me, dude. <laughs> and they said, that's the money line in that song. Oh, yeah. I guess that's what they call it now, the money line. That's, yeah. that's where you want to go. Um, it's exciting. To yeah. Play. And it's like, dude, hey, I did that. You know? and, and it was that kind of situation. It just clicked in my mind. Um, and probably, you know, it probably all that bass, all about the bass or something, probably had something to do with it, too. Probably stole a little bit from Megan Trainer. You know, <laughs> <laughs> so... But, um, you know, in the back when we talked the first time, too, I, I ha hadn't really talked to Dylan Steen a whole lot yet. I would actually set that interview up with you directly. And in the meantime, you know, I found out that Dylan is also your radio promoter. Yeah. Um, so I'd love to hear about, you know, your relationship with Dylan and, and talk good about him for a little while. Oh, man. Uh, there's so many good things to say about Dylan. There's, yeah. There, I haven't found one bad thing. I've been trying to find something. Can't I have to. It's impossible. Like, yeah. Um, I stay up late at night just trying to see what he's into on Facebook. But it's always work. He's he's uh, when it comes to social media and the charts and all that stuff. Well, he's on top of it. Hey, it comes out in in five seconds. He's already got it typed up and posted it. And yeah, he's the one awesome. that tells me when the charts out. I'm like, oh, Dylan's still posting. I go check it. But if uh, I've never worked with another promoter before, but just from you know, and I have nothing bad to say about any of them because I don't. Right, you don't know. I don't know, but I know that he is more involved with, uh, it sounds like he's more involved in, you know, being there for the artists and actually do care. Like, it's, we're his children type thing. Right, you know? yeah. Like, and he absolutely feels that way, too. He does, man. He, he takes it personally, and, and you know, he, uh, he really does. He knows how hard everybody works to put these songs out, and, and uh, he, he wants to make sure that 
he gets the job done. He, and isn't it cool when you're in a cutthroat business like like the music business and you meet somebody that's um, a sweetheart? I mean, yeah. you know, like they're, they're yeah, genuine and, and sincere and all that. I mean, you don't find that too often in this business. A lot of times it's like, you know, they'll do anything to further further the cause or whatever it may be. And I know Dylan's all about that too, but the way he goes about it is just so different than any anybody else I've really experienced in, in the business. I, I just think he's really outside the curve. You know what I mean? I'd, I'd recommend him over and over again. He's, he's a really great guy. Really, like I said, he just he loves his job and what he does, and does a great job doing it. Yeah, and what I, last thing I'll say about Dylan, and I know he's watching, um, is I mean he legitimately believes in every project that he's working on. Every single song he promotes, he believes in it 100%. And I think that's incredible considering the amount of artists that he promotes. Um, at any one given time, it's upwards of 10 or 12. And, um, I mean, I just think that's awesome. Dylan, you're an, an amazing individual, sir, and uh, it's awesome to know you. But we're talking about John Ward this week. So, um, you know, first EP, I know that you've got to be beyond the world excited about this. I just made up a new term, beyond the world, whatever. Um, so, you know, debut single, debut EP. Um, I know you recorded this here locally in East Texas in Tyler at Rosewood. Um, I'd love to hear about the first experience in the studio for you, because I know it can be really daunting for a first-time uh, artist in the, in the studio. Yeah, you know, the, the people that they have in there, and um, the, the studio musicians that actually, you know, were in there and, and uh, played for these tracks, are just out of the league so much better than I am right, at, right. at everything. And um, it's it's uh, kind of intimidating to play in front of them, you know, and, and be judged. Uh, but they're completely and totally professional folks that, you know, play with amazing people themselves. And, and uh, like Aaron Watson, yep. um, Nate Coon was the... Yeah, the drummer out there at Rosewood, right? Milo Deering. Absolutely phenomenal people. I think Milo's been on the show before. Yeah, a long time ago. episode two. Go check it out. Yeah. So anyway, um, it's it's very intimidating, um, but the guys, like I said, are very professional and, and uh, they. I mean, it's it was a very smooth process, and the people at Rosewood are super nice people too. Uh, Drew Drew Hall. Yep, Drew's a good guy. Yeah, he did an exceptional job. And they just had a number one hit come out of there with uh, Jake Worthington. A yes. lot of room to talk. They they uh, produced all of that out there too, and I mean that's a phenomenal song. And Jake's been on the show. Um, just uh, good work always comes out of there. And I'll tell you, man. I mean, Studio Three 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 at Bullard. I mean, you got two top of the notch studios right there in the Tyler area that is putting out some incredible country singles nowadays, yeah. right here in East Texas, which is awesome because I mean you're an East Texas kid as well from Jacksonville, still living there, right? Yes, sir. So uh, you know, East Texas kid. And, um, anytime something cool comes out of East Texas, we have to shine a light on it because it's it's really important for things not to be swept under. You know, William Clark Green is from East Texas. Is How really? many people know that? See, you didn't know that, I didn't right? Know that. He's from Flint, Texas. Oh. Curtis Grimes is from East Texas and Gilbert. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, and, and that's part of the reason why we have this show here. We want people to know that there's so much talent here in East Texas. That's why you're important to us. You know, we follow along with your career and what you're doing and um, you know, you're a Jacksonville kid. You're an East Texas kid, so you're representing a lot more than just John Ward. And I don't know if you've ever thought about it that way. Never really have, but uh, I, um, the support that I've gotten from the community has been outstanding and great. Uh, you know, that's it, it's really made it work. Right. So people like you guys, and likewise, all the kind of words that you shared, um, I think exactly the same with y'all. You know, uh, we need y'all as much you need us. Right. Know. I agree. I agree. It's definitely a, a team concept, you know. I mean, without the artists, we're nothing. Uh, you know, I think the artists would probably be fine without us, but, you know, we, we do the best we can. We, you know, that's why we call this this thing behind the music, because the music's important, but I think people really dig knowing the people that are behind that music, the songwriter, the performer. What are you thinking outside the music? You know, like, for example, what do you like to do? I know you like to go fishing and hunting and, oh, yeah. you know, the, the backwards kind of stuff that, that all these East Texans love to do. I'm not originally from here, so I love fishing. I've never gotten the whole hunting thing. But, um, tell us what you like to do when you're not out gigging or something. Oh, man. 
man, that's about all we do. <laughs> Fishing and hunting, <laughs> that, writing uh, songs, writing songs, sitting around, you know, uh, spending time with the family. Um, that's I have a six year old son and, and uh, a wife. You know, that we we just try to spend as much time as possible together when we're not um, when I'm not gigging, which has turned out to be it about Sundays. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's about. That's about it, you know. Which is why we do these interviews on Sundays. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or during the week or something like that. Right. But yeah. Um, we, uh, a lot of campfires used to be. Now it's getting hot outside again. Right. But uh, today's kind of been weird. It's, it's been very weird. Yeah. Well, I mean, one thing that's, uh, I'm not sure a whole lot of East Texan fans really understand is, you know, in the Texas country genre, look, we live in the largest state in the country, right? And we have the infrastructure here for an amazing country music and red dirt scene. But a lot of times in order for you, for you to succeed within that scene, you have to travel the entire state. You can't just, you know, you're an East Texas kid. You can't just do radio in Longview and Tyler. I mean, you have to go to Amarillo. You have to go to San Antonio. And I think you really understood that early on. Um, but having a family, that's going to make things pretty difficult for you. And I know you gig a lot out in West Texas too. Um, Lubbock and all those areas out there. So, um, how do you maintain a balance there? It's it's a tough thing. It's a something that you have to go in, uh, you know, starting out, understanding and, and your whole family understanding as well. Like, look, this is how it's, you know, potentially going to be for a while. You know, right. Going to be out there playing the road a lot. And, um, you just take any time that you can. That's just your free time and invest with your. And do you feel having growing up in that business too with your dad maybe being a little neglected by him because of the business as well? Do you feel like that is um, necessary for you to know how to treat that situation absolutely. and be better than your dad was for you? Yes, absolutely. And you know, my dad, he wasn't just gigging, he was doing other things. Right, too, right. So. Episode 60. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but. You know, there, with any job, there's, you know, most people are, are see their coworkers more than they see their family. You know, right. and uh, there's there's no different here. It's just the time difference. You're either in the studio doing radio interviews, doing podcasts, doing gigs. You know, um, usually on Wednesday through Saturday. Right. And then you usually have Monday, Tuesday, most Wednesdays off uh, to spend with your family, or Sunday you go out with your family, you know, and, and uh, you get to go hunt and fish and all stuff but um it's a uh, it's sometimes that line it, it changes you yeah know, of where, course and uh you might have two weeks to go spend with your family or you might not see your family for two weeks right. so it, everybody just needs to understand up front before they get into this business it's that's probably going to happen to you yeah and it's a necessary evil too i mean if you're if you want to build this into something where this is your career this is your bread and butter then you need to be ready to work on it and um, your family needs to be along for that ride. Um, otherwise, you know, like I said, it's a necessary evil. You know, if you want to succeed in the music business or really any job uh, that has traveling involved, you know, everybody has to be on board with it. And if one person isn't, that's where everything falls apart, I think. So let's talk about the record. Okay. This is uh, The Home You Made For Me by John Hoare, debut EP. Where can folks find this? Um, both physical copies. I know you have a dot com, John Hoard dot com, um, but um, send people where you would want them to buy this. John Hoard dot com is where you get the physical copy. Um, that's the only place that we're selling them. And then um, iTunes, Amazon, Google, whatever you know, it, all the digital outlets uh, you can download it there as well. Awesome. And um, there's there's six songs on here. Are you? Uh, do you have any plans on a full album? I am. I, the next. I may do a single then a full album next, but I haven't gotten that far yet. Right. So I, I need to just kind of evaluate it. And, um, you got plans for pulling another single off of this, possibly? Uh, maybe one more. Well, I'm thinking uh, my favorite one is Cowboy Angel. I really like that song. I do too, and, and I'm, I, I really would like to put that out on radio. I just don't know how it would do. Uh, they say that ballads really don't belong on the radio as you know as frequent. Um, Aaron Watson would disagree with you. I, I would agree. I would disagree with that too. That yeah. statement, but um, it's always scary to put a ballad out there. A lot of promoters don't want to right. promote right. that. I'm not saying Dylan wouldn't. I'm right. just saying that that's any, when I. Well, hey, uh, Jake Worthington, like I just said, um, that, oh, yeah, a lot of room to talk is a ballad. I mean, right. went number one. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think you know, 
you can listen to. I actually listened to the podcast with Dylan. And yeah, he yeah. explains. You know, the about timing. That. Right. Yep. What episode? One thirty. One thirty. Season two, episode thirty. So um, somehow I remember all. of this. <laughs> so I really listen to that. You know, and, and it's it's always scary to put out a single, but definitely don't want to invest in. in so even out. though you're you're one of his artists. You listen to it and learn something. Yeah. That is awesome. <laughs> that just makes me feel so good. That was the whole reason why we had you on the show, Dylan, is because we wanted to educate people on that side of the business. And I thought you had so much insight um, to give to artists. And look, one of your own artists learned something from you in that thank episode. You. <laughs> so thank you, man. Thank you for um, vindicating us on that. Because he, he was adamant about not doing the show because he didn't want the spotlight on him. But I convinced him because I told him he had insight that was valuable to people. And you just, thank you. All right, so, you ever heard of Would You Rather? Bet you haven't. I have not. All right, so we're going to play Would You Rather with John Hort. He has no idea. This is 10 questions. You have to pick one of the two of them. You can't say, oh, neither or both. It has to be one or the other. All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right, this is Would You Rather with John Hort. Would you rather drink a cup of blood or drink a cup of saliva? Oh, gosh. I have to go with a cup of blood. Would you rather be stuck outside in the pouring rain or be stuck outside in a strong, cold wind? Strong, cold wind. Would you rather eat a handful of hair, hair or lick three public telephones? Oh, man. Golly, three public telephones. I'd have to go with that. All right. Would you rather be extremely attractive or be married to someone who is extremely attractive? Married to someone. Very is smart. Yeah. Would you rather be able to stop time or be able to fly? Be able to fly. That'd be cool. Would you rather be able to stop time or not be able to pay your bills? <laughs> be able to stop time. <laughs> Would you rather never be able to stop dancing or never be able to stop singing? Never be able to stop singing. Would you rather live in the Simpsons universe or live in the Family Guy universe? Family Guy. Would you rather see ghosts or hear ghosts? See ghosts. I need to see them. I don't want to hear them. <laughs> All right. Would you rather take a cold shower every day or take only hot showers, but only once a month? Hot showers once a month. <laughs> All right. Last one. Would you rather have the rest of your life broadcast on live television or have no one remember you from day to day? Day day. <laughs> awesome. That was Would You Rather with John Hoard. Um, just so you guys know out there, I've had questions about this message to me and emailed. Um, we do not inform them of, of this at all. No. This is completely <laughs> off the cuff. Um, we know we're going to do it. They don't know we're going to do it. So they, they're not prepared. And it's always more fun that way. See, look at his face. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. <laughs> interesting. So that was Would You Rather with John Hoard. John, let folks out there know where they can find your social media and how they can book you and find your music and stuff like that. Yeah, you can uh, do it on Facebook. Uh, it's uh, at John Ford Band. Uh, same thing for Instagram and Twitter. We're just kind of starting to roll out. So it's all John Ford Band, J-O-H-N-H-O-R-D. And you all, like I said, you also have the, um, the, the dot .com, which is johnhoard.com without the band word in there, johnhoard.com. And I'm pretty sure you can get to all the social medias in there as well. And you have merch. You see the awesome hats. Uh, I think you have shirts, too. Do you have shirts yet? Uh, we, oh, we haven't got them in, but we will by this time. This I love time. this guy because he chose hats over shirts. And most people choose shirts over hats. And I'm a hat guy, so. Me, too. Yeah. Uh, very exciting. I love the hat. They're, they're solid looking. Sure. Um, I would say lit. That's my new word. But um, <laughs> you can get all of that merch and music and stuff like that if you want physical copies. Um, of this amazing EP right there on johnhorn.com. Again, like we said earlier in the show, please make sure that you're requesting the brand new John Horde single, More Than I'm Used To, at all your local radio stations. And before we get out of here, John has promised us a second song, and I'm hoping he'll do Cowboy Angel. Man, I think I can do this. Awesome. So before I uh, get into this, can I explain a little bit about this? Absolutely. All right. So first episode, we talked a lot about biological father, uh, Jeff Ward. And uh, this one, I want to talk a little bit about my stepdad. This song's actually about my stepdad. He um, he passed away a couple of years, uh, 
to brain cancer. And um, it's a, it was a very confusing time. He was actually you know, there for me more than more so than my biological father was. Um, taught me a lot of things, and uh, it, it hurts, and it still hurts to this day. And I, I figured I'd write a song about it, uh, about what I was feeling at the time. So this one's called Cavalry. He was a good man for all these years. Straight up cowboy, gentleman with no fears. He looked at the glass half full and he said. Till the day he died, it took months of hell. And what kills me the most are the memories that he made. He was turning away too many. No one will ever feel his pains. I try not to play it but it is hard. to a trivia question that was number 100 we've been very blessed to be able to um, bring you guys the best in live music acoustically here in East Texas and the entire state of Texas really and Cowboy Angel by John Horde is now the 100th song that we've ever featured on, awesome. on this show um, so yeah appreciate it I'm very excited about that um, again you guys johnhorde.com is where you can find the amazing brand new EP the home you made for me Make sure you're requesting the brand new John Horde single, More Than I'm Used To, that you heard earlier here in the show. No matter where you live, I don't care if you live in Texas or not, call your local radio station 
If you bug them enough, they will play it, I promise you. <laughs> and every single time you call, they spin that record. It helps him get a little bit higher up on the charts. And like you said earlier, let's get it to number one. He's got a top 30, uh, 35, 33. Let's get it a little bit higher. John, I want to thank you once again for coming on the show again, man. It's been a pleasure knowing you and, and having you on. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me come out. No problem. All right, guys, this is Boston Chris once again with Behind the Music, only on the ETX Rock Show. Again, you guys, if you're watching for the first time, you can follow along with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at ETX Rocks. We're located on YouTube. We're on iTunes, Google Play, and lots of other platforms, always free of charge to listen. You can download us. You can view us. Always free. Please hit the subscribe and follow buttons, though. That's completely free as well, and that'll help us out. Um, you guys, as we always say on this show, I want to thank every one of you for supporting local music. And always remember, ETX Rocks. Perfect. Hey guys, I'm Katie Lynn, and make sure to tune in to ETX Rocks with Boston Chris. Zaren Watson, ETX Rocks. ETX Rocks, Alan Fox Band. Hey guys, we're the Morning Madhouse. I'm Carter. I'm Brandon. I'm Ginger. It's the best podcast ever made in all of history. Hi, this is Paul Bebo and I'm ETX Rocks with Boston Chris Barnes. You're going to love it. ETX Rocks. Hey, East Texas. DP here. ETX Rocks. Hey, East Texas. We're Enduring House, a Christian rock band. ETX Rocks! Hey, this is Monty Pittman from ETX Rocks. Hey, East Texas. Jaden Farnsworth, ETX Rocks. Hey, everybody. I'm David McCarty with the Gypsy Creek Band. As always, ETX Rocks. Hey guys, this is Chris Colston. Thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rock Show. To the ETX Rock Show. The ETX Rock Show. Ho! Hey folks, I'm WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan. And I just want to make sure you support local music. Hi East Texas, this is Chris Wayne. And Crystal Clark with KYKX 105.7 ETX Rocks. Hey, hey East, East Texas, Texas. we're Lady Chaz, Chaz and the Tramps. And just remember, ETX Rocks. Hey, this is Todd Freeman from ETX Rocks with Boston Chris. Hey, East Texas, I'm Waylon Hicks. And remember, ETX Rocks. Hey, what's going on, guys? This is the one and only SP and Mexicano con estilo. Make sure to support your local music and ETX Rocks. Hello. 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 We're one way home. Hey, East Texas, this is Teaser. Please continue to support local music. And always remember, ETX Rocks. Howdy folks, this is Aaron Watson. Support local music and ETX Rocks. Hi, this is Chris Colston. Make sure you support local music and, and ETX Rocks. Hey, this is Hannah Kirby. Thanks for tuning in to the ETX Rocks show. Tough guy, ho! Covering music-related content of all genres, if it filters through Eastern Texas, it's fair game. Y'all bring it. From Texas, Canada down to the coast, and Dallas down to Houston, and everything in between, we are ETX Rocks. <laughs> <laughs> it's a way